Hi, I'm Burley Mullins, and this is Method to the Meanness. Let's open up this cup of cheer from Redwall. As alluded to in our intro, this will be the last episode of the Cup of Cheer Mead from Redwall. I'll be uh, opening and tasting it from this bottle. Uh, I also thought it would be a good opportunity to show you how to open these swing top bottles when you have a relatively high ABV beverage that is sparkling in them, because it's a bit tricky. Ideally, you want to have it fairly cold. Uh, it reduces the um, pressure that the uh, dissolved carbon dioxide is under. Um, and it just makes the whole process a whole, a whole lot easier. So what you want to do is keep your hand on the top like this and undo the latch. <laughs> It'll go without much provocation. And you want to hold onto this latch with your pointer finger so you can apply pressure as needed and let it out slowly. And there we go, it's open. I had this plate on underneath just in case. <laughs> just in case of a small mishap. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Starting to let out a little bit more. <laughs> it's uh, very well carbonated. <laughs> That's why if you do this at home, you want to use a very strong bottle, uh, either designed specifically champagne or a swing top bottle like this that is designed for brewing beer or champagne. Um, this is under a lot of pressure. Uh, 90 PSI was a pretty common uh, point of reference that I found. Uh, it's a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this. Now, because of the secondary fermentation that happens in the bottle, uh, to get it carbonated, it will always be pretty cloudy. Uh, there are things you can do to mitigate that, but they require fairly expensive equipment, and um, it's just more of a bother than I, more of a bother and more of an expense than I am willing to put into this. Uh, but enough of that. Let's give it a smell and a taste and see how it is. It uh, has sort of a roundness to it that it was missing last time. It was very sharp. The rhubarb leaps out of the glass. The honey is providing this warmth, uh, solid backbone. Smells very refreshing. Uh, as I thought, this should be a very good spring mead. Mm. It's uh, punchy uh, due to the carbonation. Uh, the rhubarb is the star of the show. The honey is there just to add structure to this. It's uh, sharp and it is, it just dances on the palate. It's bright. It's great for the kind of weather that we've been experiencing here uh, <laughs> in uh, mid-April in the uh, Southern United States. This will be great through the summer. This would be a good brunch beverage. Um, it'll stand up to, uh, you know, good uh, breakfast foods, brunch foods, and barbecue even. This would be great. If you happen to have a champagne bottle with real cork, 
I feel like this would do good with some age. Um, with the micro-oxygenation provided by the cork, uh, it would actually hold up well for a good... Oh, this could probably go for two or three years. And that micro-oxygenation will really bring out uh, the strength of this mead. It's very sharp right now. And because this is a fully sealed container with no such micro-oxygenation, uh, this is probably as good as it's going to get uh, in these circumstances. Um, some compounds do break down over time, uh, but we won't be seeing too much of that with this, I don't think, uh, just based on experience. Not much I would change about the recipe, if anything, going forward. Uh, if you decide to do this on your end, uh, you can follow what I've done and be satisfied with a good result. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, uh, and hit the bell icon. Uh, it's the best way to support the channel right now. Uh, comment if there are any pop culture meads that you would like to see me recreate, or if there's any other mead topic you'd like to see me cover. I've been Burley Mullins. Thank you for watching The Method of Meanness. This is good.